What's up, you guys? My name is Carrie. I'm the registered dietitian at Pursuit Training Center. Today, I want to talk about why we need to know our hormones in fitness. So the journey of fitness is not just dieting and training. Your lifestyle is arguably the biggest factor that's going to impact how your body is going to respond and adapt in the long term. And this is important for us to understand because with all these new crazy fitness concepts, some of them good, some of them not so good, we need to start asking ourselves better questions. How is this gonna affect my body? How is this gonna affect my thyroid function? How is this gonna impact my hormones? How is this gonna affect my adrenal glands? How is my metabolism going to be impacted? So let's take uh, HIIT training for example. In the short term, this is going to work, but over time, if that's all I'm doing, my body is going to adapt to this higher level of stress, especially if I'm in a calorie deficit, which most people who are super gung-ho on HIIT training are. So then when my body stops responding because it has adapted, I think to myself, hmm, I must not be doing enough. So I push harder, I train harder, I diet harder. And all I'm doing is digging myself a deeper hole. So people go in with this mindset of, I need to lose this weight. I need to lose this body fat. I need to fill in the blank and I'll do anything to get there. I'll sign up for any program. I'll join anything if the person selling it looks good. Cue Instagram. But what happens when they get their weight down? What happens when they get there? What did they have to sacrifice and what are the consequences? So in doing so, most people change their sex hormones, they change the way their thyroid functions, they change the way their metabolism functions because the amount of muscle loss versus fat loss. And we don't realize what's going on at the time because we are so preoccupied with what the scale says and weighing a certain amount. But remember, we need to ask ourselves, what are the consequences of that? What's gonna happen when I'm 25, 35, 45, 55 and beyond? This stuff is very real and it's way too common and here's why. People these days are just way too stressed out. Social media raises cortisol, our lifestyle stresses us out, not sleeping enough stresses us out, taking on too many responsibilities into your schedule stresses us out, and the amount of hours we work stresses us out. Stress is rising, which is a critical concept for us to understand. So stress can be a good thing, but too much stress can be the catalyst of this negative feedback loop in our body. So if we think about stress as a bucket, and I can only fit so much in my bucket, and there's different kinds of stress that go into that. Things like metabolic stress, physical stress, um, perceived stress, so on and so forth. And if I raise one of those and my bucket overflows, well, then I have a problem. So let's take training for example. A lot of people use this as a de-stressor or stress reliever, but we have to understand that this is a physical stressor. So if I'm adding this physical stressor on top of an already stressed body that's been dieted, sleep deprived, so on and so forth, they don't just cancel each other out, they magnify each other. Stress bucket looks different for the pro athletes and the influencers that you idolize. It's their job to eat well, rest, train hard, look amazing, and manage their stress. Your job is working 70 hours a week, having three kids, running to school events and practices and dealing with whatever else life throws at you. You can't expect to apply the same concepts to your already crazy stressful lifestyle. And then on top of this, you're adding in fat burners and supplements that you don't even need. You're doing all the cardio in the world. You're not eating enough because you're running around like crazy and don't have time. So in reality, you're starving yourself and bottoming out your calories without even realizing it only to then on the weekends eat way too much because you're so stressed out and that's how you cope with it. Not only does this create a poor relationship with food, but eventually something's gotta give and it's going to be your hormones. The reality is we're just doing way too much. If you live the modern American high stress lifestyle, you do cardio, you train and you calorie restrict, you are going to throw your hormones out of whack. It's bound to happen eventually. And when it does, how you handle it is going to dictate what happens the rest of your life in your fitness, health, and your body composition. And if you just keep using Band-Aid solutions and never address your stress bucket, these hormonal imbalances are going to exacerbate to bigger issues. Things like gut dysbiosis, leaky gut, insulin resistance, weight loss resistance, and impaired metabolism. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in part two, so make sure you watch that one as well. But this is why we get blood work done on all of our clients. We wanna know their baseline and where their hormones are at before they start, so that way we can structure the nutrition and training protocol accordingly. 
Thanks so much for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe, and send to a friend, and I will talk with you guys in part two.